Hello, mompreneurs. Welcome back to the Unstoppable Mompreneurs Tele Summit. And I want to thank you, seriously, thank you for sticking with us throughout, throughout all these interviews, for supporting us and just sending us lots of awesome, awesome feedback. Hugely appreciated. And tonight we have another fantabulous, is that a word? I'm not sure, but I think it's most. <laughs> Okay, we have a fantabulous mompreneur, another one, with us here tonight. Her name is Tonya Lewis. We are going to learn tons, tons, tons from uh, Tonya. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about her through her bio. And she is going to share shed loads more with you. So Tonya Lewis is a licensed clinical worker. All right, did I get that right, Tonya? Uh, a certified international coach, just yes, There we go. Who empowers open-hearted entrepreneurial women who want it all. <laughs> to claim their heart's desires, femininity, and their inner wealth and worth. To stand in their God-given power to create rich lives and soulfully aligned businesses in the vibrant radiance, know-how, and confidence that supports their mission. A heart-centered freedom fighter by nature, Tonya is a certified international freedom and success coach, entrepreneurial life stylist, holistic transformational expert and speaker, amidst her most beloved roles of wife, mother of six, Gammy of three, oh, and homeschooling mama of 15 years. Tonya, welcome, welcome to the Unstoppable Entrepreneurs Kelly Summit, this interview. Oh, thank you so much, Cheryl. I'm so, so, so honored to be a part of this, a part of your power circle, girl, like this oh. circle. And I love, of course, this topic. And this, this is a conversation to me that really matters. It does. We have some really meaningful convo. Um, and so I'm, I'm just so honored to be able to join you, you amazing women, even you amazing women that are here with us. Like, I'm so grateful to really be at this beautiful virtual circle. Like, this is what this is. This isn't just uh, another tele-summit or video summit, but we together are uh -huh. here and we are in a gorgeous virtual circle really connected and i'm just wanting to honor each of you for investing in yourself and showing up to be here today with us this means that you're serious about creating a life of impact for yourself and your children so thank you all oh beautifully said and thank you for sharing that and the honor is truly mine that you can be a part of this empowered and empowering circle thank you great well i know you've got lots to share lots more so we're going to roll on in your That's very good. first question yeah can you tell us a bit more about yourself because i know you extend well beyond what you know an a4 size paper can hold so tell us a bit more about yourself your kids your your grandchildren and a bit about your journey to becoming a mompreneur what was the catalyst for that so i'm going to hand it over to you yeah, and, and thank you for allowing me to share. Um, gosh, I think when it's all said and done, I, I feel like I was born an entrepreneur mm. um, so much in my life. And there's so many clues as to what I was doing. I was actually, I'm doing this new book for my children and it's all about me so that they'll have something, you know, as life goes on to reflect, mm. to really know me, like not even just to know me during the time that they been my children mm. to really know me as a person and I got these books years ago and just in honesty like life has been so busy and as you know can get pretty cray cray yeah. when you've got six kids and you've got grandbabies and you're homeschooling and running your business and all these good things yeah. and then there are realities you know as you and I've been talking about there's losses yeah. there are all sorts of things and and as I shared with you um, last week, mm -hmm. I actually experienced the loss of one of the most beautiful souls mm -hmm. that I've ever had the opportunity to have as a client, to have as a friend on this earth. And I was struck with mm -hmm. the just surreal news that she was killed in a car accident mm -hmm. while taking her son to school. 
And as you know, Cheryl, I wasn't really feeling so well this past weekend. And I allowed myself that time to just really be with that pain mm -hmm. and also to be really present to committing to, to make the legacy of being a mompreneur and living a full life. This was who she was. She was mm -hmm. fun. She was fabulous. She was fierce. And I could really say is because I... I believe that her spirit lives with us in continuing the legacy. Um, but I can say that it was very sobering for me to mm. see her move on at the age of 35, a powerful mm. woman who had created for herself her dream life. You know, her model was to really live the dream and not just be the dream. Mm. So, I, I mean, I'm sorry, to not just, not just dream the dream, but to live the dream. Mm. You know, as I really started to think about that, I thought about the beauty that she created here on this earth, creating her, her business, creating a second location that literally she fought to have mm -hmm. in the place that she wanted over mm -hmm. the last year. And that she saw that realized and her children got to see her do this. Yes. And, you know, as I was looking through some of her things and I was thinking about how much I know she adored her children and how much mm -hmm. her presence meant, which is my core value, why I created homeschool as a means of life for my family, to be really present with my children, to be able to travel when we want, to be mm -hmm. able to work how and, and when I wanted and to really design our mm -hmm. life around our values. Mm -hmm. And I saw that she also had done that. And so I started thinking though about her leaving so suddenly and what things, if I were called to transition, would I really have regretted not doing? Mm -hmm. And I remembered that even though I just moved, I'm like, okay, those mama books that you got a couple years ago are still sitting in the closet untouched. So I got my mama book out this weekend and I started writing about my childhood. It's one of the very first questions. Yeah. And as I started to write about that, I saw that, oh my God, like you've really always been an entrepreneur. Like mm -hmm. I was selling stuff young. I was always about beauty and and fashion and creativity and you know even though during some of the seasons of my life some of those things seem like they were a little squashed out with just mm -hmm. some of the turbulence in my family mm -hmm. um, and it was really difficult to be in my gifts um i ended up leaving home at 15 and mm -hmm. you know just coming out into the world trying to figure out who i was and mm -hmm. what life was about and trying to navigate alone and that's very much a part of I think even the entrepreneurial journey. So it makes yeah. sense that God would allow me to have that experience because it really prepared me for being able to create life in kind of a territory that it, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty. Yes. So I'm saying all that to say that I really feel like to some degree I was born for entrepreneurial life. Mm. And you know, really when it's all said and done, Cheryl, freedom is my, it's at the top of the list for my core values. Absolutely. Be able to design a lifestyle around everything else, you know, really being able to design my business around the lifestyle that is, is right for me and my value to be really present with my family, to have mm. exemplary self-care, to be able to travel, to be able to do business in a way that's aligned with my soul signature. Like these were all really important things. Um, but I'll tell you, my entrance into entrepreneurial life did come, probably became the most important. I had begun to do that when my children were small. But I will tell you that it took a major, major significant turn when I was deciding to leave my first marriage. Okay. And I knew that my children were going to require so, so, so much of me. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to be able to be free, mm -hmm. to be there for them, to yeah. be there for their activities, and at the same time to continue, and really not just to continue, but to go further <laughs> and yeah. upward in the lifestyle that I saw for them. And, mm -hmm. and to not lose a beat, not just, just to not skip a beat. Yes. So in as much as that experience you know um the for lack of a better word breakdown of your first marriage i'm sure that was painful for you it was also catalytic because in in in, in, in perhaps quite major ways because he said it was the entrance into entrepreneurship for you and it, it reminds me of a um 
uh, I, you know, I said on, on past Telesummit interviews that I don't at all consider myself a religious person, but I do consider myself to be a very spiritual person. I have a very strong sense of God and yes. what that means to me. I'm not hung up on what name God is called um, or what shape or, you know, flavor essence he or she takes, but I know that's a very personal relationship I have with, with God, my God, our God. And there is um, a podcast of Joel Osteen, or O.C., I think he says his name. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I would be honest to say I came on to Joel very, very late. I would not give him the time of day for several years because I thought, you know, probably quite religious, not my cup of tea. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because what I love, I can say love about Joel, is how he blends, you know, the essence of God, the works of, the, of God with spirituality. You know, you could be listening to Jack Canfield or, or Wayne, you know, the late Wayne, Wayne Dyer when you listen to Joel Osteen, the connections for mindset. I think 99% of what he talks about is mindset. And I get that. We get that. Yes. We definitely get that. And there was a podcast he did. I think it's one of the most powerful ones I've listened to. It's about don't waste your pain. That's right. That is what got me on to him, to listen to as many of his podcasts as I possibly can. And sometimes, yes, we're human. We're not brought back by painful things that happened to us you know and I really do believe after listening to that podcast for no fewer than 50 times now and I have 50 more to go at least I'm sure that we experience pain I don't say um it's it's, it's willful the pain that come upon us but in as much as we're going to experience it we shouldn't waste it we should learn the lessons that are always always present yes in them to help us to grow, to help us to serve and be fuller versions of ourselves. So I can see where that's coming from for you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do believe that there is great purpose in yes. all pain. Yes. And that everything is here to teach us. Mm -hmm. And if you start to embrace that, and I'm also a lover of Joel Osteen. I just, um, I yes. actually get the devotions, get the daily devotions because yes. It just inspire me and uplift me. And he's, I joke around and say, he's my, uh, my, my pastor pillow, meaning on the times that I feel that I need to rest, mm. going out to service if something's going on with my family, mm. then I so enjoy watching him right from my bed, like just yes. enjoying the services. But uh, you're absolutely right that there, there's the opportunity like mm. to everything even the worst of our teachers mm. are really the best absolutely absolutely a dear friend of mine likes to say um uh, it's something along the lines of sometimes god wraps wrap his gifts in sandpaper you know and uh, that's my dear friend cheryl also named cheryl and <laughs> that's <is> true <laughs> some of our greatest teachings come out of that which is you know we just don't want it in our lives but it's there we might as well learn what it presents. Fantastic. So you started very early as a entrepreneur. What were some of the early, you know, the challenges, the teething pains that you experienced early days and how did you overcome them? Yeah, they're actually the same ones that I see with my clients today. Yes. Which were overwhelm. Mm. You know, overwhelm for mompreneurs is just the biggie. Mm. Um, lack of balance which now mm. i've really begun to feel is isn't it's, there's not really a perfect balance ever because mm. life happens yeah uh, but it's more about looking for harmony and how you can learn to weave and bob and um some of it was a lack of planning in my younger years um which i've become really really strong in mm -hmm. It's probably the thing that i've been able to gift a lot of my clients with because the better um, organized and aware you are of what it really looks like to run your life with high efficiency mm -hmm. and in flow. You know, I can tell mm -hmm. you, I like a lot of white space. I like a lot of margin mm -hmm. and that allows you to recalibrate faster yes. with goals that are uncertain. So that was a big one was just the uncertainty. I mean, I had brand new babies. 
Mm. So I started when I had babies like that were brand fresh new. You know, I was still married to my first husband at the time. And then, you know, as I've progressed, there's been more and more, more children. Yeah. And at the same time, more responsibility with becoming mm -hmm. a full-time homeschooling mama. Mm -hmm. So the overwhelm that would sometimes come in because of taking on too many commitments, mm -hmm. not knowing how to do less better, mm -hmm. not knowing how to buy, mm -hmm. you know, these are some of the original challenges. And then just in honesty, I also think that back then I was, I was really about the shoulds of motherhood and business. And I wasn't always connected to desire. I wasn't always fully connected to myself and what my true makeup is and was. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I was doing business and life very misaligned. In other words, trying to do a pattern or a path that was demonstrated somewhere or was even projected mm -hmm. um, that it just really didn't feel right for me so mm -hmm. you know being misaligned um sometimes not even leaning into my truest desires you know so, so mm -hmm. denying myself if i wanted to be in nature being inside trying to work or not transitioning to a new business model mm -hmm. you know or I, I was having this love and this urgency, but trying to get everything prepared or, you know, logically reasoning things through and not doing business from my heart, which is mm. what got me success as a mom in all of my relationships and especially in business. So yeah. those are some of the early ones and they're the same ones that I see today, as well yeah. as fear. You know, as well as fear, as well as fear. And, you know, you, you, you spoke to several crucial pieces there. And one of the ones that jumped out at me and that I'll address here is about you not being fully connected to yourself. But I think it's something that I see with a lot of moms. You know, we become moms and we become so many things. And we get lost in all those layers of other roles that we begin to fulfill, but we lose touch, we lose connectedness with yes. who we really are. Yeah. I think if you ask half of moms, never mind moms and others, at least half, probably more, who are you really? Yes. You know, what are you really here to do? Yes. To answer those questions honestly and seriously, a lot of moms don't know, and I don't say that with judgment at all because we, we're so busy with everyone else, you know, putting the, putting the mask on everybody else, we're not putting the mask on ourselves. Yeah, and, absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think that, that that's, I mean, Sean, sure, what you just said, it, it speaks to such a good point because, you know, when you're disconnected from yourself, you're disconnected from your vision. Yes. And what happens is that life just starts to happen and all these decisions are being made from this unconscious place. And when you really come you really start to realize that being everything to everyone it really doesn't serve it really doesn't serve the people that you're trying to serve as much as you know when you really start to develop a relationship with yourself and have the vision for your life you know when I work with women most of the time when they come to me life has become unmanageable Mm -hmm. so it's not just about reclaiming control, it's about reclaiming their spirit. That's right. And so, you know, getting back into connection to who they are. And mm. sometimes it even takes like a massive self love affair to mm. recognize that it's not selfish. That's right. To know yourself, to know what you truly desire, to be really clear and authentically giving yourself permission and deciding to create the life that's proper for your soul signature, not someone else's. Because there's so much social conditioning mm. that points to who we need to be as women, wives, mothers, servants, you know, um, in our businesses. And if we get all tangled up in that, mm -hmm. and we lose a sense of self, we actually lose a lot of energy. We yes. lose a lot of what, what's here for us that, that helps us to create from the essence of who we are. And so until we return back to those truths and we connect to ourselves until yes. we come home, we really don't give the impact that we desire to. So it's not selfish. It's very, it's very self-honoring, yes, yes, but it's also unto all. It's unto the good of everyone in our lives. Mm -hmm. So for me, my newest, my newest 
thing that I have really, really anchored into is that when I am being legacy, being the legacy that I'm created to be, I am raising legacy. Yes. And it's only from that place. And so, you know, I think we really have to do some, some introspection about how disconnected we are from our truths, who yes. we are, what we even love anymore, what we desire, what lights us up, mm. what, us, what puts wind in our sails. Mm. And marketers, just unfortunately, we are the ones that get lost the fastest because we're so dedicated to all of the things that are telling us what to do. Yes. Instead of really, you know, continuing to be connected to our heart. That's so wonderfully said. That is so wonderfully said and so, so very true. And again, I'm going to jump in here and remind all listeners, you know the drill by now. Make sure you have a notepad and a pen and that you're taking notes. These are priceless treasures that are being shared here for free. You would pay, you know, an arm and a leg otherwise. So please feel free to jot down. I'm doing it. Um, you know, taking my notes as I have done on every single interview and I'll continue to do because, you know, we're always learning. We're always inspired. And I, I just can't let this go to waste, you know? So yeah, jump in there, grab your pen and, and, and notepad. Okay. So we've been through your growing, growing pains. And as you so rightly outlined, they are what I think most, if not all entrepreneurs experience at some point one degree to some one degree or another. So now that you're further along, more established, what are some of the challenges that still pop up for you from time to time and how do you manage them? They're still the same. That's yeah. the truth. It can be the overwhelm, you know, as you are, um, when you grow, you're mm. going to the new levels. So there are more demands, more, mm. uh, more opportunity, which is a blessing. Um, mm -hmm you're responsible to a lot more and as we both know to whom much is given much is required that's right so at the end of the day you know um, and there are transitions mm. as well. so though I think in the early days there's certain places that I do feel that I'm extremely masterful and and that I'm able to help women become really masterful so that they can enjoy more of the journey like we don't do business just to create another job yeah. you know we create it we, we create the business to create life Absolutely. and a lifestyle and mm. really show up aligned in your life along with your values and and who and what means something to you and be placing our energy our time and the money of energy into those areas that's right and, and otherwise it's it's meaningless and it doesn't mm. serve God, it doesn't serve us it doesn't serve anyone to be in denial and to be out of alignment you know with that way of living so when it's all said and done it's still the overwhelm as you're ascending yes. you know as you're growing um, obviously there is always a place where one I guess I'm thinking back now to Cheryl one of the biggest mistakes that I made in the early days in business is a lack of support. Mm. So back then, you didn't hear anyone talking about coaching. No. Coaches. <laughs> we didn't have mentors. No. If there was the social conditioning that you yeah. should know everything, and that for some reason, if you didn't just figure it out, that you weren't good enough. It was another mm. message that a lot of women, which is like the not enoughness. Mm -hmm. I must not be as smart as I must be inferior to, you know, that sort of thing. Yes. So I know even for myself, just with the history of leaving home at 15, you know, I had some beliefs around not being supported and being mm -hmm. alone. And mm -hmm. so I did business the hard way in my early years. Mm -hmm. And so what I do see in my own business right now is that as I grow, I'm really, you know, the same way that I take a stand for women to create a legacy that they can really be proud of and one that, that really they know that they're honoring the life that God's given them. And of mm -hmm. course, making meaningful money, you know, enjoying a beautiful yes. life. Um, I think that at the end of the day, I'm going to take a stand that they have the right support. But yes. even for myself, I realize as I grow that there's times that I have to visit that place again and ask myself, do I have enough support mm -hmm. in all of these areas? Mm -hmm. To continue creating and growing and not fizzling out in overwhelm. 
So for me, it has been those same things, just yeah. uncertain schedules, unpredictable schedules. You can never mm. forget when your children may be sick, That's when right. you may be sick, when someone, you know, passes or even a change. Mm. In, you know, I'm a soccer mom, classically. Mm. So when, when they change the schedule for that and you've got to be on Skype with your client in South Africa, you know, or your client that's in New Zealand or mm. They've changed the schedule and you're working on opposite time zones. So right. there are things like this that we don't control. That's so right. I think remain constant no matter what your business model is and mm -hmm. no matter how far along you are in business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we got to keep rising, got to keep rising to, to the occasion. No, definitely, um, definitely get you there. So you like me uh you focus your work primarily with mompreneurs what would you say is now you do that now as your business has, has evolved and this is your primary focus now what would you say is the number one obstacle that you see holding most mompreneurs back and what would you we probably touch on it in, in you know as we've been through to get to this point but if we can zero in on that number one obstacle what what is it and what would you recommend to help mompreneurs listening here to overcome it? Yeah, one of them is really genuinely having the support. Mm -hmm. I think that that really is the biggie because if there are any other mindsets that are unsupportive, without the support, it all just gets so blurry and mixed up. And mm -hmm. I've watched women for years have amazing ideas or be doing business models that aren't aligned with who they are. They don't fit for their bodies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, in regard to when they really can get up and do that business. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're not morning women. Maybe, you know, for them, there are just certain practices or exemplary self-care that they require in the yeah. season of life. And the business model that requires them to get up and get going at four does not work. Mm -hmm. No matter how much money and how many zeros you can add to the formula, mm -hmm. that's them and their feminine makeup. Mm -hmm. So I think that for sure, the support is the thing that I see because I, I work with so many women that are high achievers and they're doing mm -hmm. a good job of coming out, being visible, sharing their gifts with the world. But a lot of times they're DIYing and they're going at it isolated. Yes. Without the help of a mentor that one, right. has already gotten to the other side of it. Two, can fast track you. Like that's yes. what I think about my own life. Like. I, want the, I prefer the fast track. Like, I just mm -hmm. feel like doing business in a model where you don't have this beautiful luxury of support. Mm -hmm. Another way that we're more in the masculine, mm -hmm. we're more in the space of, I think even sometimes it's a worth and value issue. Mm -hmm. to see yourself mm -hmm. as worthy of having the yes. elegance of not having to do it all and not having to scrape and not having to struggle and not having to, waste five years of a learning curve that could really be accelerated and i'm having that support with a coach or with a mentor with a consultant that can help you and give you the know-how so i i really think that's the biggest because you know we can talk about all the other things like giving yourself permission to succeed um having worth and value money mindset all of these things but until a woman is supported by a coach that's experienced enough to get through those mindsets of fear, fear mm. of fear. numero uno, they're huge, huge, huge mindsets mm. with success for mamapreneurs, fear of how you'll be viewed, fear of if I really, you know, launch this amazing idea, am I still going to be able to be fully present with my children? Mm. I'm going to take care of myself, you know, the, all these fears. So until you're rightly supported, there is a place, Cheryl, where you do not have the ability to create a schedule that supports a business and being fully present and doing these things. Yeah. Like, I just, I think that that's where you spin out. So even yeah. when you have the best of intentions, yeah. all have blind spots. Yeah. You know, I have a few coaches. I have my main coach, mm -hmm. that is my main voice, and then I have some other women in different areas mm -hmm. that are very supportive. Mm -hmm those areas for amazing accountability but also for know-how mm -hmm. women have experience and they see me and they know me and it's very custom tailored yes. and i just can't even imagine my life in that. Space 
yeah. nor would I ever want to see my clients struggle with what they struggled with before they came, you know, into a relationship with me yeah. and, and having to suffer. Because to me, doing business isn't hard, but struggling is. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you extended out, you know, what support, because I was waiting to ask you what, when you say support, exactly what do you mean? Because I wanted our listeners to be clear on that. And, I'm, I'm so, and this is not about a sales pitch. It, it, it is the truth. If this is about, yes, family support is absolutely important. You know, we, we, it, it, that's vitally important. And support from, from friends as well, vitally important. And this, this is support. And, well, support is support. But it must be, um, it must be loving and gentle and, and uplifting and honest and honest. But even the honesty might not be always what we want to hear. It, it's nice when it comes from a place of love, yes. of being critical. Um, so when you talk about a coach, I think that's a very, very important piece as well. Because family and friends, as wonderful and supportive as they may be, they do not necessarily know and most times do not know um, who we are as mompreneurs, who we are at the core of our beings as mompreneurs, what our vision is precisely, what it is we are here to do exactly, what it is we want to achieve on purpose. And a coach, because of what they do, they, they connect with those parts of us very very easily and at the end of the day we only know what we know we That's only right. know what we know and I think you you know you just hit the nail on the head one after the other there when you said a coach a mentor a consultant someone who can help take you to the next level yeah. and short circuit the suffering and <laughs> the struggle yes yeah and something that you said, Shola, that that's really important that I do really want to anchor in. Mm -hmm. I think I'm glad that you clarified. Yes, the reason that I'm I'm even so ready to piggyback on what you said is the fact that the people that love us, you know, even if they see us, even if they understand our dream, they're not professionals. Mm -hmm. They're not equipped. They're not trained. I mean, when you're talking about coaches who have had experience, not just mm -hmm. in creating, I mean, I feel like I've been coaching my whole life, but when I created my first six figure business, I was homeschooling my children. Mm -hmm. I was serving in leadership in my spiritual community and I had a lot of responsibilities and there were just things that, like you said, I just didn't know. Mm -hmm. And had I had someone then, I could have spared myself what happened later, even mm -hmm. once we were up to the higher numbers and much bigger vision Mm. that I didn't have to start feeling all this stress in my body and mm. I didn't have to fall, fall that far out of balance and mm. I didn't have to give up certain parts of my life. Mm -hmm. It could have been done with greater ease had I yeah. known a mentor or consultant yeah. or a coach could have shown me the way to do that with mm. greater ease. Yeah. So there's not a family member on earth that I would have had that could have done that. Mm. It wasn't a friend. A lot of times our friends have the same problems. Mm. The same challenges and mostly mm. the same mindset. So mm. we don't usually have money problems. We have money mindset problems. Mm. We don't have time issues. We have time mindset issues. Yeah. Same thing with health, relationship, everything. Yeah. So a professional coach, as you're mentioning, has the ability to get in, find out what those fears are, and dismantle them. Yes. And you actual resources and tools that support that transformation ongoingly long after the sessions are there so that as you grow and as you expand you know because when it's all said and done like everything that we want is outside of our comfort zone that's right our families they mean well our spouses mean well of course, of course. Well, but if their level of consciousness is only yes. where it is yes. they can't help us get past you know growing bigger than our problems mm. growing bigger than our past wounds that's not their area of specialty. Of course not. And I, I'm glad you said that. It's not their area of specialty because God knows they are so supportive, you know, or can be yes. so supportive in, in other ways and other ways that are necessary yes. to sustaining us and, and helping us to grow. But right. this, this, is a special, this is a specialty. 
this entrepreneurial piece is a specialty. Thank you for speaking to that so beautifully. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I see you women winning. And, you know, it, it's really, that was the game changer for me. Yes. So it was anything that I know in the early days. I mean, I've done over two decades of business. Mm. And genuinely, you know, there are a lot of common themes as we, we've talked about. Mm. But at the end of the day, like that support piece was the biggie. The support, yeah. having the community, having the know-how, mm. given, mm. trying to mm. figure it all out. Like that's mm. a big Absolutely, absolutely. Now I'm going to ask you a question here that's you know been split several ways among uh, the experts that have been on the on on the tele summit so far, and it's this one: Do you believe that any mom can become a holistically successful mompreneur? I do. Okay. I do, but here's the disclaimer. <laughs> Everyone's had one. Yes, let me hear yours. Here's the disclaimer that it is about making the decision mm. and going for it like your hair is mm. on fire. Like mm. there, you have to be relentless, you have to be fierce, you have to be committed. Those are the mompreneurs that create a life that is the legacy that they've seen in their mind's eye for a very long time or the inspiration that's been coming up. And you know, the worst betrayal is self-betrayal. It's, it's dismissing yourself, dismissing your abilities, dismissing your dreams. And at the end of the day, I do believe that any mom can start a business, especially now, like we are in one of the most supportive times for creating business. I mean, when mm -hmm. I got started, it was so much harder in all the, the various business models that I've had. Mm -hmm. You had to have a lot more money you had to have a lot more of everything. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different game. Mm -hmm. Today, there are so many free resources. In fact, when most women come to me, the very first thing that I help them do is to first really clarify what is it that's living inside of them that they're really, really passionate about, what they already have to work with. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, then again, looking at their priorities, who and what is a non-negotiable, what we have to build around, and then when it's all said and done from there, you can decide on a business that lights you up. And with the support of all the free resources online, I mean, for me, what I think about is creating a profit plan that gives you your, your investment right back. Yeah. So that takes away the, what's gonna happen to all this money. I like to think of you know, ways to create on a budget that, that really is feasible for that woman. Now, you know, we need to get in reality here. There's, you have to make some level of investment. Yes, However, of course. once you do that, there are ways to do it for less. Mm -hmm. so moms that are saying, I don't have the money. Um, I, my belief is that everything is here and it's provided for us. And when we make a decision, that that gets things spinning. And then there's the commitment. So we have to put some skin in the game. Yes. And I believe that everything else organizes around that. that Absolutely. That he, wants us to, he wants us to succeed. Oh. Of empowerment is so available to us and for us. And often, once we make those decisions and we give ourselves permission, mm -hmm. then the resources become obvious. The filters open up. Absolutely. Make your success non-negotiable. Mm. Have it. So yeah, then any mompreneur can become successful. Oh, okay. Without the support. So mm. there are some things. That's my disclaimer. There are some critical things that you have to have in place to have holistic success. I love mm. that mm -hmm. you use that term. Yes. That is what it looks like to be. That's, that's what it looks like to have it all mm -hmm. and not give up anything. You don't have to give up your, mm -hmm. your children. You mm -hmm. don't have to give up your health. You don't have to give up an amazing relationship, you know, with a, a, a man that you love or your family that you care about or extended family or helping maybe for some women, you know, they're also in a season where they're taking care of aging parents. That's right. That's right. And they don't have to give up travel and I mean that's what I love about all these ways that we can build business I mean mm. everyone's choice isn't my choice to be a homeschooling mama for me I wanted freedom Cheryl so that we could travel whenever we wanted to like we're outy like we pack a bag and we're out right. and I can work from anywhere in the world and yep. 
school from anywhere in the world. Yes. However, you know, even if it's something else for any individual woman, right now, more than any time in the world, there is so much here that's supporting your success. I wholeheartedly agree. I, I wholeheartedly Supporting the success of any mompreneur. Yeah. So and if you don't know how to do that, then you really have to be talking with one of us women that believes that. Mm. Really be able to show you mm. how much more you have than don't. Mm. I, I totally agree that, you know, we are living in truly, you know, it sounds cliche, but this is a golden age. It is truly a golden age for women. Thanks to our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunties, great aunties, godmothers, the, you know, and going back all the grands before them who have done the back breaking work. Yes. So that we don't have to. Yeah. That we don't have to. So, no, we, we owe them a huge debt of gratitude. Seriously, seriously. Um, I mean, we've had mompreneurs, expert mompreneurs, like, you know, on this summit who have said no, flat out no. Some have said yes and no, and others have said like yourself, yes, but. And the, the caveats, the disclaimers, um, pretty much echo the ones that you have stated here. You've got to be committed. You've got to be relentless. You say hair on fire, some say fire in the belly, but everything has fire attached to it. <laughs> and it speaks to that burning desire. That burn, it's that burning desire that's going to, if I can, you know, take um, on something that you shared earlier, right at the opening, the loss of your dear client and, and friend, you know, an exemplary mompreneur by, by all that you have said, you know, she's in a sweet and resting place right now. That, um, you know, it's going, you're going through that loss and going through it even now. It's only been a few days ago. There is something that has to get something that gets you beyond that grief, yes. that pain every morning. You know, it's, there, there are experiences we've ha we have in life and this probably was one of them for you. You wake up in the morning and before you open your eyes, it's the first thought that comes to mind. Yes. You know, and it, it takes serious fire in the belly, commitment, relentlessness, fear in it fierceness, whatever we want to call it, that drive, that passion to yes. get you out of bed to yes. do the work you were prepared, put here to do. It's very easy to pull up that duvet, you know, and just lie down and go back to daydreaming or sleeping or grieving. It takes fire to get you going. And that is a constant that has shown up here with yourself and every other successful, serious, driven heart-centered, passion-driven mompreneur that I've ever come across. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. totally look at it. Mm. Right. I have to be very, very connected mm. to value. Um, you know, that's what I was telling you. Like, I, I, I really want my life to matter in terms mm. of making a difference. So, again, when I see a woman leave here so far before... Mm. Um, you know, she would ever be going to hear your sweet baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All do, girl, like being able to mm -hmm. do amazing things. And so mm -hmm. right there with your, your beautiful child. Yes. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I'm realizing this is not a time to take yourself out of the game. You no. know, I've watched no. so many of the mompreneurs that have come to me who didn't even really know that they could create a business doing something that they loved. Mm. Dead end jobs were stuck in relationships that didn't honor them. Mm. And they were able to say yes to the things that not only were the yes for them, that were the yes for their daughters and their sons that are. Ah. And I, I, I cannot speak to that enough. You know, I had the, I've had the blessing of watching women say, I don't have the money. I don't have this. I'm, I don't have that. And when they got over the threshold of fear and took a stand for themselves and stopped taking themselves out of the game, but instead started to ask good questions like, how can I invest in coaching? How can I start this business and still take my kids everywhere they need to go and, you know, still continue to work my job and get the support? 
that's when things shifted. And now some of those women today, I've watched some that didn't even have the confidence, who weren't making any money, bring in $18,000 in a week recently, one client. Another mm -hmm. woman that a year ago was stuck in corporate and a job that she really didn't feel good about. And now, like literally this year, Cheryl, this really blessed me because she's a mom of two small boys. And this year, to be the first to own a home in her family. Oh, so to buy her home and then to be able to be an amazing mompreneur. Hey, baby girl. <laughs> hey, darling. And then go, oh, I couldn't resist. She's okay, so cute. <laughs> And then to go on and actually mm. buy a brand new luxury car in the same week. Mm. You know, this is night and day from a woman that the year before didn't even, I don't even, I don't even think it was a year, honestly, mm. but was not even believing that she could do a business that she loved. Yeah, now yeah. she's living her dream. She's in this higher vibration in the world. Making that's it, right. Being the yep. first to have home, home ownership, passing this on to her son. That's right. Being a luxury Legacy. You know, which yeah. is not about just owning stuff, but if that's something that is is within your desire, mm -hmm. that is so possible. Yes. So you know, not taking herself out the game, and and the list goes on and on. I've watched women get off of depression medicine, lose weight they couldn't lose. You know, regain a sense of self and pass that on to their children. Mm. Talking legacy. I mean, I have children. I have one of my daughters in particular that now is having her first baby. And my two daughters that actually are moms, the one that's got one on the way and the one that actually already has one, I've watched them have this freedom. You know, my daughter, one of my daughters is a coach herself. Wonderful, and wonderful. Business, when she was in homeschool, you know, this is a girl who started her first business at 17 and now, you know, made her first six figures before she was 20. Wow. And you know, now so look at where she's stepping in as a mom mm -hmm. for all of the choices that she can make. Oh. You know so this is this is legacy. This isn't just a mom saying yes to starting a business or up leveling your business if you're stuck. This is about legacy. It's what we're teaching our kids and it's what we're giving them the opportunity to not hear about but to see be done. That was eloquently said, and it rolls into, this question would normally come one or two later, but I'm gonna bring it up right now. And you speak to the legacy and the, the pathways that being a mompreneur open, open up for our children. Because you know, I'm a mompreneur, you're a mompreneur, first and foremost for me, I'm a mom. Yes. I'm a mom, that's my most you know, important, coveted role. And I've got to get that right. And part of getting that right for me, without the societal pressures and shoulds um, attached on that, um, I do my best to not ascribe to most of them. But part of that for me is, is being an example, showing her that you can do whatever it is you want to do. You can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve you know your choices aren't limited to one or two things you know there's a, a plethora of, of choices out there available to you and whichever one you are connected to feel connected to and make take the decision to follow will be absolutely fine and would yield wonderfully and abundantly for you you know and uh, that's what's been echoed as well by every single mompreneur that's come on this tele summit, and you've just echoed that with your own children already. A daughter who is a coach, uh, a, a six-figure coach, even before she's she's um twenty. And again, we're not talking about the figures here. How many zeros follow any particular digit for the sake of of that? We're talking about what is possible. And while I say that, um, I've also put in there, I'm not apologizing for how many zeros follow, <laughs> <laughs> follow any particular digit between one, uh, from one to nine. Because as women, for too long, we have had hang-ups about money and being embarrassed to talk about it, feeling shameful and even dirty talking about money. You know, and hanging on to misinterpreted 
you know, scripture verses as money being the root of all evil when the scriptures never said anything like that. So, you know, it's an important piece. We need to own that and embrace it and, 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 and become respectful and, and friends with money. It's here to serve us. The problem comes in when it goes the other way around, you know. That's the problem. But it's here to serve us. And this is about seeing what's possible. And it's what's possible, what's possible for us. And by virtue of what's possible for us, what's possible for our children. Absolutely. I mean, and, and girls, you just said a mouthful, like so, so many things that mm. I so agree with, as I'm sure, you know, the majority of our beautiful women that are listening um, will either have some insights about or are already, you know, having mm. a sense of awareness. But one thing that you said that I really do think is important to really own is that money, no matter what relationship we're having with it, we are having a relationship. Mm. We can either improve that relationship or we can suffer in a very dysfunctional relationship in a very unsupportive relationship. Mm. And when it's all said and done, it is the currency and the energy here on this earth that takes care of life's possibilities. Mm. And you know, when we look at our values, like one of my main values for my family is to have organic food, to have an organic way, you know, lifestyle. Mm. And so to make that investment, I have to use my debit card or some form of money mm -hmm. to actually do that if I'm not outgrowing it myself. That's and right. At the end of the day, you know, money releases life's possibilities. Mm -hmm. if, if great literature, you know, there's so many things that are important to me. Um, and, to, and to my family and to be able to have that, to have exemplary self-care, to be able to nourish yourself and take care of yourself, to be the vessel mm -hmm. that can make a great impact to be the vessel that love and beauty and impact and meaning can flow through, we have to have money for even those things. And then certainly, again, for our children's lives, where we live, how we live, you know, there is no right or wrong per se, it's based on individual choices, but it is very difficult to live a life of great impact and meaning without the ability, you know, for me, I'm so grateful that we've been able to, to sow into causes and things that are very aligned with our, our vision and our values. Mm -hmm. And that money energy, I have learned to be very grateful for yes. the ability of each of us to create it, yes. to generate it in a way that's totally aligned with your values, mm -hmm. and totally aligned with your soul signature, mm -hmm. and to really see how we only can impact the world as we start to have a better relationship with our finances. Absolutely. So I, I love that you pointed that out and that it's not dirty. You know, again, there's that's there's mindsets and there's beliefs yeah. that you yeah. have given us. And when yeah. we get to really understand and look at things, you know, and just be open. Just mm. be observer. You know, the observer always has the power. That's and right. so whatever we're willing to observe won't hold us. And if we can and can we can start to just be curious yes. about our relationship with money. We mm. may actually see that we increase and we allow more in and we don't sabotage it because mm. that it has a purpose. I mean, money goes where there's a purpose. So we'll actually generate more mm. as we are aligned with our purpose in God. So whole other big conversation there, but <laughs> it's fabulous that you touched on it because a lot of mompreneurs are taking themselves out of the game yes. because yes. people have made them feel that they're not spiritual mm. or that there's you know something wrong or self-seeking about going after a business that would generate mm. money. And mm. It's an oxymoron to talk about one and not the other. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's all in business for a mompreneur and it will determine a life of freedom, a life of possibility, a life of choice to yes. me the real luxury that I think mm. and a life of choice where we as mothers can shape the landscape of whatever our belief system is it's very difficult to do until we get the money into the hands of mothers who care absolutely and mothers that can have a voice here on this earth mm. I do take a stand for that with you Cheryl absolutely 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's a, a big passion piece for me, a huge passion piece for me. Women's, moms, women's financial empowerment, you know. Nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change significantly and profoundly until, you know, we've reached a critical mass and we're not there yet. And I'm speaking on a global level. We are not there yet. And that, that needs to happen. Agreed. You know, and I want to see that happen in my lifetime. I really want to see it happen in my lifetime. Fantastic. Great. So, oh my goodness, we're really burning up the place. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh, the time went by so fast. I know, it has. So, let's roll into the next one there. Which do you think you tend to lean more towards? Work-life balance or is it more of a work and life blend for you? Definitely blend, hands down. Mm. Again. I've learned that sometimes balance, the way that I see it, is mm. not possible. You know, this perfection, you know, in the perfect world of how I'd like to see my schedule, my world operating, flowing. I have learned this is ebb and flow. You have to learn how to ride the waves and mm. give yourself permission to just recalibrate and recommit and all these good things. And to also leave, again, that margin. Yeah. that a lot of moms aren't leaving for the space when things are unpredictable or uncertain or go a different way. Um, but blend is a better way. It means that it can be crazy. Like I'm one of those moms who has been like literally flying into the seat to do an interview with like, you know, no pants on, <laughs> and got pajamas on or something <laughs> happened right before that. And you know, my children needed me and I yeah. needed there to take a call or to yeah. do something different and so you know there was no no jeans on with their pajamas <laughs> with blouse and literally doing mascaras I'm coming in and, and I know so many of us really? running out the door with like one shoe on and you know, <laughs> it was real deal and yeah. you know if you learn to embrace that and accept that you can blend everything and keep your joy the joy mm. is a Lose your joy when it's not all going perfect. Um, so blend for sure. Yeah, great, great. And our final question here: What would you say is the number one habit, the number one uh, strategy, and the number one secret that have been responsible for you achieving the success that you've achieved and sustain? Hmm. I had, to, I had to think about this and say number one. There's so many. Mm. I think as of recent, and it would be different in every season, but again, it goes back to knowing myself mm. and my truest desires, my soul signature, my purpose and my values and having that vision in place for those things. And that has been the catalyst to allow me to see where I've been unsupported, where I have needed to up-level my mindset, where mm -hmm. I've needed to, you know, create a different schedule that supports that or to get rid of things that were unessential to that all happening or whatever it was. But it's really about knowing. And sometimes what's kind of crazy with that is you need support just to know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. but that's that's no, and I'm just kind of lost. I've lost myself. Things are mm -hmm. out of control. I'm not in harmony in my life. I'm mm -hmm. not feeling aligned. And you know that you pay attention to the symptoms of mm -hmm. when you're losing your joy, when you're frustrated all the time, if your money is not looking the right way. Like all mm -hmm. these different things are just symptoms. Symptoms. To give us feedback and allow us to know that something's got to get adjusted. Yeah. And so, so I think that's a big one, girl. I, it's always tough for me to go to the what's the number one, like yes, yes. Oh my God, yes. But this, this put forward for you. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing that. It's a, it's a, it's a great degree of honesty there. And I think, um, you know, Montpellier's listening, myself most definitely. It's one of the things that has uh, come through this summit. The, the, the super high degree of honesty, authenticity, integrity that have come, you know, been, that has shown up with each and every expert. And um, I am, um, I feel truly blessed for having, you know, the, the panel of women who have participated on this tele summit participate with me. Um, I really believe that, you know, in reaching out, 
these women came and, 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 and embraced this opportunity for a divine purpose. I truly, truly believe that. And first and foremost in that divine purpose is to help inspire, inform, encourage, educate, and uplift yes. all mompreneurs who are listening during this tele-summit period. And I sincerely hope well after this tele summit is 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 on is over. So you, Tonya, have been you know one of the truly truly awesome, and, and you all have been. I don't mean that as just yourself. Um, you are among an awesome awesome panel, and I thank you wholeheartedly for showing up here. I know you've been through a lot to get here. And I appreciate your presence here and your sharings all the more because of that. So thank you so much. You have um, imparted, what would be the word there? Just, just rich. Just, I feel truly, deeply rich and enriched for what you have shared. And I pray God that that is what our conversation um, would have left mompreneurs listening um, to as well, fired up, you know, if there was a flickering, flickering flame in your belly, I hope that's a full burning blaze now to go out there and do the work that you've been put here to do. I was listening to a YouTube piece from Oprah recently, and she talked about, you know, just imploring the people she, talk, she was talking to to stop wasting time and that's not meant as a label it's not meant as a judgment that's not what I got when she was talking to me and everybody else it, and she followed that up our time as Steve Jobs said our time here is limited and we don't have to be afraid of that that excites me that excites me because it tells us clearly we've got work to do and we've got whatever that time is to do it the best time to start is now yeah so thank you, Tonya, so much for so lovingly imparting that message and so many other powerful pieces. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for allowing me. And, and you know, and something that I, I really do believe along with you, Cheryl, is that it is. The time is of the essence, you know, yes. especially as I mentioned mm. uh, with the recent, you know, transition of such an amazing mm. woman had so many dreams mm. did live so many of her dreams she lived a great big life and experienced mm. so many great things for herself and and as a contribution and with her children and her memory you know that's the memory that she's she's left and that's fueled right. with. but it is a conversation that has to be had that that the time the time is now yes. life is today and yes. i you know um for those of you, especially, gosh, if you're still here, that just really speaks to the fact yes, that we are does. so committed to building a life that is really um, very aligned for you as a, a mompreneur, that you are invested in yourself because this, you know, to be here now, this really speaks to your commitment to yourself. So I want to, again, just honor, Cheryl, I want to honor you and I want to honor every one of the women Thank that you. is still sticking around listening. And as you know, too, you know, if this has been a conversation uh, for your community, mm. as you know, I've offered a gift um, yes. for the ladies in your community. And mm. certainly, again, if you are still here, then if this conversation has stimulated you, it doesn't have to end. You know, if you know mm -hmm. right now in your heart that it is time to look at what you want to create if you haven't created a life of entrepreneurship yet as a woman and you want to step into it as a mompreneur mm -hmm. or for some of you you're there but you're experiencing blocks you're experiencing maybe you're at one level and you're not moving forward for some of you it's time to shift and do something different you know wherever you are um i want each of you ladies who it really speaks to your heart and you want to have a deeper conversation about this, I want to invite you, I've offered to your community, Cheryl. Yes, be um, sure, be um, sure. Yeah, each of you ladies, I've opened up time in my calendar. Um, I will just say there's a limited number of these that I can do. So if, if it speaks to you to speak voice to voice with me, whether by Skype or by phone, then do make sure to book your session immediately. Mm. 
spaces will fill up because of all the other things that are in my slots mm -hmm. with my six kids and my grandbabies and of course all my clients and you know the fullness of my family and life. However, if it speaks to you that you really do want to take a deep dive, then I'd like to invite you, it's my personal invitation, to have a rich life, rich you success session with me, mm -hmm. voice to voice with another mompreneur, um, to take a look at your life and what's been stopping you and what's been in your way. And actually, I'm really, really good at getting beyond the surface. There's some mm -hmm. things that you know, but there's some things that I'll be able to help you get to the root of and actually create a succinct freedom plan. Meaning, by the time that you leave our session, there's no more spinning, no more wondering, no more trying to figure it out, but you will know what your next right steps are so that you can actually move forward and go from wherever you are right now. There's no place that is better than where you are. It's the mm -hmm. right. But if you have a desire to be somewhere else, making that commitment, you'll have the answers once we discover what's been in the way in the first place. So I want to invite you to take a place on my calendar and join me for a rich life, rich life, uh, rich life, rich you success session and get popping. Let's do this thing together and, you know, really watch what can happen and what's possible in your life when you've got some of these things dealt with and uncovered and dismantled for good and the resources that you need to have total success. So again, this is for your community, Cheryl. And ladies, again, there's a limited amount of time and there are limited spaces. So be sure to uh, you know, go on ahead and grab your spot right away. Because I don't, if this really speaks to you, I don't want you to have to sit on the sidelines just because you forgot about it in being a busy mom. And I totally get that because mama brain can kick in at any time. <laughs> right now, and I am excited for whatever the divine plan is here for those of you that we are going to be together and really just see what's possible for you in your life and business. So, awesome. Um, awesome. An awesome, awesome author. And it's free. It is free. It is absolutely Free. So that's your rich, rich life, rich you, um, free discovery, like a self discovery session. Yeah, and let me give the link too, just in case, because yes. sometimes moms are there. But uh, yes, please say it again, so people can take it, take note of it right away. Yeah, just in case, because I know there's been times when I've been listening to the audio and didn't know how to get to a link, but I know Cheryl mm -hmm. has this link available for you, women. Mm -hmm. um, just in case, mamas. Uh, it, you can go to, I'm moving my virtual home right now. So this is another thing that attests to the fact that you don't need a website and you do not have to have a big, you know, glorious website to create ecstatic yeah. success yeah. as a mompreneur. Um, but I'm moving, I'm transitioning my virtual home to really align with my current focuses. But right now, if you'll go to tanyalewis.com, that's T-O-N-I-A-L-E-W-I-S.com, you can get there and you will see that the Rich Life, Rich You Success Session is actually sitting there for you. It's, it'll show up and have forward slash gift or something like that or Rich Life, Rich Life, Rich You Success Session um, if you pull it up a certain way. But it will be there under TanyaLewis.com, T-O-N-I-A-L-E-W-I-S.com. And it's very easy. Once you put your information in, it's going to give you access to my calendar right there. So right there on the spot, you can pick a spot that aligns with your schedule. Fantastic. And I would say, you know, if this really does speak to your heart, the time to act is now. The time to act is now. Yes. And, and just honor that voice. That's with you. Okay. Yes, Cheryl, again, thank you for the opportunity even to stay this long and to have <laughs> such a meaningful conversation as entrepreneurs and for the delight of seeing your gorgeous girl come oh, in. Bless you. She's a delight. She's a delight. Create a business that lights you up, that allows you to be with amazing women or whoever and whatever you're called to. Yes. And He'll be a mom and be present. So I'm, I'm just sending you, Cheryl, Thank you, sweetheart. circle of experts that you brought on board. Thank you. And all of you ladies, so much love and so much success energy for what you're called to do to impact this earth. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. It's been an 
honor, truly an honor. I am humble. Much love and blessings to you as well. Okay. Bye, everyone. And we'll see you again. Please come back for more of, of this series. Bye for now. Bye-bye.